Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I meet a comics writer, a comic book writer from the last Comic-Con that I went to, Mighty Con, not Comic-Con. Not to be confused with the one where like it has the movie stars in the Marvel premieres. These are the ones, they're the traveling circuits that kind of go around. And I've talked to a few people that have gone to them. There's Mighty Con, and that's the one that I went to where I met the writer that I'm talking to today. That was a roundabout way to get to the fact that that's how I met him. He actually contacted me and we hopped on and started talking about the new Kickstarter campaign that he has for issue four of his comic, Cog and Flame. So Cog and Flame is a story he's written. It's based on the, uh, it's based on some characters that he made while hosting a Dungeons and Dragons game. He even tells me that one of them is a longtime character that he created when he first started playing. So we talk about how the Kickstarter is going, how you actually do a Kickstarter for something like this. And it's it's a great conversation. We learn a lot about publishing and talk a lot about uh, the different people that he works with, finding artists to work with the writing that he does, having an editor doing his own uh, comic fonts for the lettering that goes with the comics. All kinds of great information in this one. So here's my interview starting right now. My name's Neil Mockerman. I'm a comics writer, letterer. Uh, I have a couple series out right now, Cog and Flame, uh, which we're here to talk about, and Doom Speaker, which will be eventually out through Scout Comics, and a couple other ones that are in the pitch process or slow rolling, eventually out there at some unnamed date. Okay. And I want to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, we met at the Madison Mighty Con, I think. Absolutely. You had a booth. Yeah. Okay. Because I yeah. met a lot of people that day and I wanted yeah. to assume, I, I assumed it was you, but then at the same time, I'm like, was it or was it not? So yeah. Yeah. I wanted nope. to double check first. And we, for some reason I decided to do that live. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah. We met, we met at the Madison Mighty Con, which was, I was one of the few vendors there. Uh, so there, was, <laughs> there was quite a bit that didn't show up, but it was fine. I did. I did well. Yeah. You were right next to moved. somebody who didn't show up, weren't you? Like there was, uh, there's the, a my row that I was originally in. I was the only one in the row Okay. when the show started. So they started tearing down tables and I just picked up my table and moved into the row that I met you in at the end of it. Just cause like, I'm not going to be out here in the middle of nothing by myself. Right. So yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, and they moved you into like, you were in this row of people that I specifically went out to go see. So it was really cool. So I was just going from table to table to table, introducing myself and it was awesome. And, um, a, and a funny story along with that, I was actually in a, uh, I, there was a, when I first wanted to try going into mighty cons and like, you know, taking some of my comics or trying to do them as zines or something like that. Uh, one of them that was coming around was in Milwaukee. It wasn't the Mighty Con, but it was a different one. And I was like, oh, I should apply for that. And then months went by and I, and then October came. I think it was in October, maybe September. It was, this was like two years ago. And I was like, oh, I forgot to sign up for that. And we're like, well, let's go see it anyway. We went there and there's this empty table there. And my name was on it. Apparently I did apply for it and I forgot all about it. <laughs> and, and I showed up to it going, that's my name on this table and there's no one here. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I was afraid this year with, you know, all of these cons and tables I've signed up for in 2019 for the 2020 season. Yeah. And then they've rolled and some of them got pushed to later 2020 and mm -hmm. then rolled again. So I'm like, I'm real afraid that I was going to miss one that I had signed up on. <laughs> so I just kept checking like, okay, is my name on this? Okay, good. I'm, I'm going to this. I'm bringing my stuff. I'm pretty sure I have a table. So have you signed up for many my... of these? Um, I did. I had a little sprint here in the, the late summer, fall. I did Cincinnati Comic Con, the one here in Dayton, Ohio. I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Okay. Um, that was going to be my and, next question. <laughs> uh, I just did Indianapolis Comic Con. And then uh, there were a couple other smaller ones scattered out throughout that. There was, I did a, a retro video game con. I heard about that, that one. I wanted one to go day. to it. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun. You saw different people, and there were a few of us there that had uh, comic books and somewhat tangentially related. I learned that old Nintendo games and old 
Game Boy games go for very, very high prices. They can. So that's yeah. That's the guys next to me were just making bank off. I mean, I'm sure they invested a lot in the the stuff they had. But right. It was just baffling how how much they all went for. So, <laughs> but it's fun. I like going to non comic cons you know each each show is a little bit different you get to some of them that are just we're here to buy funko pops or right. you know we're here for old comics and then the few that are actually for indie comics are are nice that's ohio has space which is small press and alternatives comics expo oh. in columbus ohio and that was canceled this year okay it's usually sometime early summer but that's a good one because it's just indie comics and people are coming there to buy indie comics not coming to buy toys or you know old editions of marvel stuff and that so that's that one's always a good one to go to yeah so, and just to see who else is out there what people are doing so mm-hmm. and it's, you know. i've i've started uh i didn't know the difference until i started this podcast i didn't know the difference between the cons i've gone to a bunch yeah. of different ones there's the wizard con there's the mm-hmm. mighty con the wizard con was the first one i went to and that one yeah. was that one felt way more or maybe it was just the location i went to rosemont to go to okay. it and that one it just seemed way more uh, like how you would expect a con to be not like the San Diego con where it's like movies and actors mm-hmm. and stuff. But, it, but this yeah. one, this one had like the full on elaborate, like cosplay in the lobby yeah. and, uh, and, you know, things like that. And it, it felt like I was walking through an Ikea. It was endless. Yeah. All, <laughs> all the, all the special guests or D list celebrities. Yes. Or, you yeah, know, I met Julie yeah. or uh, Jody Sweeten from yeah. uh, full house, <laughs> which was awesome. That's, yeah. That's there. What did, I went, oh, I also did Huntington Comic Con that was in oh. West Virginia. And that's one of my friends was just volunteering there. And he had um, someone from the office, the the red haired woman. God, oh, Meredith. Her. Meredith. Yeah, Meredith. She's there actually a jazz singer. She, really? Yeah, yeah, she does an improv jazz act. It's like a com- comedy act. She's actually like pretty legit improv. That's um, cool. Yeah. I know. It, it's he, he in, was. It, you think it's surprising. But then when you think more about it, it's like, no, that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, yeah OK. Yeah. And yeah, he was he was her handler, or just you know getting her drinks and sitting nice. there and doing the thing. So oh, wow. and then there's there's always wrestlers and shit. But no, yeah, they're they're all a little bit different. So but, yeah, and, yeah. And so how did you how did you start getting involved with them? Like, what was the? Uh, it seems like it's obvious, but even me, like saying I only just started going to them a few years ago, and then tried to apply for one not even less than two years ago. You know, yeah. it's what made you finally go. Hey, I wonder how I could get in on this. Um, so I've always, as a kid, I wanted to do comic strips. I was like a big Calvin and Hobbes fan and and that's what I wanted to do. And then I got a biology degree and (laughs) went into labs (laughs) as one does science stuff. And, um, I I guess it's been three or four years ago. I kind of wanted to get back into it and Uh I've been playing a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and writing a bunch of stuff. And that kind of re sparked that writing process. So writing stuff for campaigns and that, and that's yeah. when actually Cog and Flame is based off of the main character in that Cornelius uh, is based off of one of my old D and D characters that I loved the rest of the table didn't necessarily, but I had just written so okay. much backstory and stories and I'm like, okay, I've got this story. I've got this want to do the comic stuff. So kind of mesh that and gave it a stab, you know, writing out a script and fumbling through all of that. And mm-hmm. so about a year of writing, writing stories and I'm like, okay, I want to find someone that can do the art. And I just was um, looking on, there's a comic book collabs forum on Reddit. Oh, okay. And the the guy that did the art had posted that he was looking for work. He did a lot of, D and D character portraits, but he was a comic artist. So it was a good fit. We went from there and he's introduced me to a lot of people. So once we got the first one out, I'm like, okay, how do I sell this? So there was a little con at like the community college in our town. So that was my first one. And it's, you know, there was, it's a tiny room and they do them like four times a year. And it's got, you know, the, the local bookstores there some people selling old toys and that and then the hallway leading in there's like five tables for creators right so it was 
it was me. Um, I did all right, you know, sold a few. And then, but through that, I met a few more people. And one of the local guys that's goes to everything started, you know, writing down, you should check out this, you can check out this. And most of them, you know, by that time it was too late for the season. You have to jump on them like a year ahead of time. Half the time they right. sell out at least the bigger ones. So, and I wasn't ready to get into the bigger cons at that point with one book. And so we continued on the series and we're issue four is what's on Kickstarter right now. And right. then I started the doom speaker series uh, and had that first one out. So I had a little bit, a little bit more to sell. And so it's always nice at the shows. If you just have one book, even if you sell to every person there, you know, you're still only, you know, nickel and diamond it through but the more you have the more diversity especially if it's different genres of stuff at the show you know i've got a fantasy one and doom speakers more yeah it's got some magic in it but it's more carnival type old-timey carnival so well, yeah it was a little bit different so hopefully get some more stuff out here and diversify and how 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 quick of a turnaround are you doing with these i know you're doing the kickstarter and we'll go into that in a second just because uh it, that's what you're raising the funding yeah. for but but how much of a turnaround like when you do these and you were saying you had the one and you're working with another artist and you're uh, doing the writing like and there's yeah. the back and forth like uh, um it depends on like working with ethan for cog and flame if he's just working on that, you know, if I hand him the script, he's gotten down a month, two months, you know, getting it working at his own pace. You know, we're not hitting deadlines. It's not like it needs to be out this. So right. You know, when you get there. So we did, I think, two the first year and then one in 2020. Okay. And then this one this year. So about about one a year for that we could go quicker just you know he's got other projects he's working on and i don't have a real timetable for it so i'm i'm fine with one a year so yes that's, that's fine and the first doom speaker came out a couple years ago and then the artist had a couple other big projects that he had to work on uh he did it's the artist was walter osley and he did metal shark bro and then he had a webtoon ghost bats which took him a whole year to do and then oh, wow you know we're kind of here and yeah we're actually switching up artists a little bit on that because he's super busy so we'll we'll see where they go i've got a couple that are just starting it uh one of the, my colorists for cog and flame one of his friends has done some pages so i think he's gonna or he is going to take over the art for doom speaker and hopefully walter's gonna color to help continuity of it so okay but yeah and yeah. you started this kickstarter for issue number four and it, and first of all super impressed like when when you shared that with me i looked and i was like holy crap he's almost up to his goal already and you I'm know getting close <laughs> i think right before it so i did the goal of 2500 um and we're at like 1600 right now so and it's got 14 days to go 13 days to go so it's getting there, you yeah. know. I, of course, you'd like to see it, you know, shoot up like it of does course. those first couple of days. But I don't think it's not going to fund. But you know, it'd be cross it a little sooner and get that sweat off there. That'd be nice. Yeah. So, but and why did yeah. you decide to go with a Kickstarter instead of say uh, Patreon or something or any um, of the other formats? Um. So I've toyed with the Patreon thing, and I think that works great for artists. I just don't know how much people would be interested in a patreon for a writer um I, people do it and right. you know you know script samples and that it's just to me it's less interesting i probably wouldn't back it which is <laughs> terrible to say but, Although, but you know I the artist say, stuff i like to see you know yeah but, but with with see that's the thing with writers it's i i feel like you have a like an extra sort of nudge because one of the worst things for an artist to do or a comic guy or you know a guy that makes music my being myself here is going okay now i have to tell people about it what do i say and it's yeah. like that can take me like two days to write uh, something you know and writing, as a writer you get to go like oh i write it like this oh it's, <laughs> it's still terrible writing having to write like a one page synopsis or a pitch yeah. Like I can get my one line pitch and, you know, I've given it a million times for the comics that I have out at all the shows, you know, uh -huh. you can do that without, but once 
condense that whole like story arc into a one page it's impossible i don't <laughs> okay that i get i'll yeah. give you that i'll give you yeah. that but i'm saying it's... like even if you like write an update post oh like, yeah i feel absolutely. like everything yeah. i write sounds like it may as well be a memo from your landlord going hello mm -hmm. well excuse me while well, i need you to do yeah. this you know everything i feel like everything i write sounds like yeah and I, I don't know how to get around that and then i rewrite it and then all of a sudden it's like oh now i just sound like uh, like a doofus um mm -hmm. <laughs> oh i any any post any of that i'm like is this the tone i want and <laughs> i'll find myself my twitter tone is not the same as my facebook tone like right I, I feel like the facebook is always more straight professional and twitter hey here's some stuff look at it you know <laughs> so but um getting back yeah the kickstarter uh it we did it for issue three and i just did a smaller one and i wanted to get start doing kickstarters yeah. you know i i think that's something get your feet wet with it do small goals and kind of get that following of the kickstarter people doing that hey you know i've done this i've successfully funded it i successfully got people their stuff yeah so when it's actually you know something that i i need need or one that you know a bigger goal you see these guys with you know fifteen thousand, twenty thousand for that like nowhere near able to do that but it helps to have a couple under your belt before that so you know Makes smaller sense. goals single issues so it's yeah I've, I've never been able to even get my foot in the door. Like every time I do it, I'm like, I don't have anything that I can justify doing. I don't know why. I just, I, I am that insecure about trying to do one that I'm just like, I got to be able to make it. it, it it's, ugh. anyway, it's, it, that's my own frustration. I, so no, I understand it. Tell completely. me how you got over that. How do you get over the, because I know so many people that do it and they're like, I do this and it's fantastic. Uh, and I, I don't, I, I don't get it. I think with doing the first one, um, Walter had done the coloring for that. So he had done Kickstarters, large, large Kickstarters for other stuff. Okay. And so I showed him a lot of like, hey, I want to do this. These are my planned tiers. You know, are these right? Do I need to add things? Are my price points? You know, they had done it and all the wording of all the story and that, like, what do we need to add? And the terrible video they want you to make at the beginning and <laughs> yeah, just sounding out here's my comic um <laughs> but they had they had all done them and some of my friends had done them the ethan brewerton the artist for cog and flame had done a couple for some of his other projects so he had done a like a coloring book for his mechanical doodles that he does oh, cool. um so they had all done them so they were real supportive and hey you should do this uh, you know, talking to them. So I maybe had a little leg up than just doing it. And I've backed a lot of comic Kickstarters and board game Kickstarters. Oh, you have. So just, you know, seeing what's out there, seeing how people are doing it, looking at the ones that are struggling or really succeeding, seeing what they had offering. Like, why is this one different than this one? Like two comics that look almost exactly the same. You know, why is this one failing and this one? Yeah. 400%. So. And do you think it's through promotion or do you think it's through, they have a larger fan base or they started with a bigger fan Probab base? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and some of it's just weird, you know, what algorithm you get, you know, scooped up in, but you know, a lot of this stuff is who, you know, you know, who you can get advertised with, who you can, you know, on a podcast like we're doing right now. <laughs> so yeah. So, and just, and that's, Part of the reason I'm still I'm doing this other than just trying to grow that fan base. So we're already over the number of backers that we had for the first one, which is nice. So okay. it's, if we grow a little bit each time, then I guess that's a good thing. So, so how how are you growing it? Like, what's your method? What is a <laughs> method, or at least uh, the theory of the method? Because as we said, it's like you never know. <laughs> yeah, um, I've done reached out to a few people that have podcasts, um, people that have other Kickstarters going on, you know, we've done updates with each other's stuff in them, you know, like, Hey, you like this, check out these other Kickstarters that are running, um, posting on just about everything I can find all the, the Reddit forums, the Facebook groups for comics and all of that. And yeah, just messaging everybody and their brother about it that has, hasn't seen it i had it launched right before i did indiana comic con so i had a little 
flyer thing out for that. So I, I got a few from it. So it's always nice seeing names you don't recognize on the Kickstarters that you're not just, yeah, you know, hitting your friends up for money. So like, okay, I don't know who that person is. That's good. That's you know, true. That's a good yeah. point. Huh. So, and then seeing those same people come back for the next one, like, okay, they backed the first one, didn't know of them, but they still came back for the next one, which is fun to see. Okay. So I always, I always like orders and Kickstarter stuff from strangers. So <laughs> someone, someone new is stumbling across and taking a chance on it. So, right. It's, it's so funny that statement could go either way. It's like, yeah. you know, <laughs> Kickstarter and Facebook strangers yeah, yeah. are, are yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. It's great. It's great. Love them. Love it, them. And uh, so you would say Facebook and Reddit probably work the best for you is what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, and Twitter, Instagram, you know, I'm on it. And I, I get the, you know, I'm sure people will be glad when my Kickstarter's over so they quit having to see my posts about it. So, I mean, they can they can snooze me if they want, but, you know. Yeah, no, and, and I've dabbled with that in a sense, too. Like, sometimes I'll post something, and this is, doesn't even have to do with anything. Like, I'll post something, yeah. and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to, I just posted about this the other day. I don't want to yeah. do it again. And so the other day, I didn't, ex- or not the other day, uh, last month I was working on an animation and literally posted every day, like, here's another scene, here's another scene. Yeah. And I did that, and... um it actually did work. It's, I, I just don't feel it does. I feel, I keep thinking social media is people that are in the same room with you where they're like, Oh my God, shut up. I'm trying to work. It's like, no, yeah. they don't actually they can, see a lot of it. They can screw it, <laughs> scroll through it as long, you know, and yeah, they might, if they're not looking at that right time, it gets, you know, depending on how many friends or contacts they have, right. it easily gets lost in the shuffle. And you know, looking up the, okay, on Facebook, this is the best time, or uh, the Facebook groups give you those algorithms that you have the most views at this time. That's and true. That. So just trying to hit those windows. But yeah, I, that's exactly right. Posting more about it, less of a chance of just getting lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Of people scrolling down through and not seeing it. So. Okay. Yeah, it's good to know. And and Reddit is still one where I just feel like when I show up there, everybody knows that I've that I don't belong there. Like I yeah. only come by when I have something to say about something. Oh. So <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, I'm not a, a big. I'm a Reddit lurker. I'm not a big poster that much. I'll post a few comic things that I'll get like a like on here and there. Right. And then you know, I'll post something stupid for D and D and get you know a pile of them like, okay that's the same with facebook though you know my same post the same five ten people like right away and then i post something stupid of a pet or that and like you have 50 likes in the first couple minutes like okay you guys do see my stuff you just, <laughs> yeah. just... which is fine it's fine. right of course of course yeah. yeah it's it's one of those things where it's like of course you you're, you don't have to like it uh, yeah yeah it's the way it is with Imager. It's like uh, uh, I get one dislike and all of a sudden it's like everybody's like, wait, yeah, you're right. This does suck. And then all of a sudden it's got 20 dislikes. You know, it just it starts yeah. with one. I have I have never <laughs> messed with Imager. That's uh, you, you usually have like Reddit people and Imager people. Um, usually they don't cross that much. It, I know. So. It seems like they keep trying to cross them, but they, yeah. they don't. But it's it, it is very similar. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm hot and cold on that. Anyway, um, so how did you uh, how did you start not writing the the comic? Because you, you had mentioned you did that from yeah. D&D, but like, were you a writer? You went to school for biology. <laughs> I know. Uh, so but I do currently um, in my job, I write uh, process uh, like uh, operating procedures for the company oh, okay. I work for. So I'm writing very dry how-to stuff about um i'm quality assurance for we're a company that breeds reptiles so really all yeah yeah <laughs> okay. uh, we, we ship all over the country and like most of the reptiles you see in the pet stores probably came from uh, us so um <laughs> yeah so i write um you know the step-by-step instructions on how to clean cages and how to do that and so I get that that is writing um but no not, not great writing to this. <laughs> yeah um so but I I did some writing you know high school college okay uh, creative writing courses and that but nothing nothing formal but it's something I'd always been interested in yeah but I I read a lot of you know get the books how to write a comic script how to write this you know yeah. the all the 
the thick comic ones that are out there i probably have all of them on my shelf and keep getting them as they come out and so i'm just kind of figure it out i guess so yeah i don't i don't think there's a a right way to be doing it there's no there's probably wrong ways but you know yeah if it's similar and working you know the longer you work with an artist the at least my experience the looser the scripts have got on that like you know divide this up how you want it this is kind of what i want going on and you know a little looser with my page descriptions and that so you know not tight tight this this is exactly it so yeah but you know if i'm searching for a new artist or a new project it's yeah it's a lot more formal on my on my writing so. okay and i i did not use an editor for cog and flame like just for story and that doom speaker and my other project uh 10 hours to Innsmith. Uh, I've used the same editor and it's amazing where they've taken the story. Like, okay, huh. the story's good. You're missing these that, you know, just general story forms and that like add something here add something there, you know, change it up. So not just a grammar editor, but an actual story editor. Right. So. Yeah, that's something and that that's, I always forget about. I mean, I'm not much of a writer to begin with anyway. Yeah. So so I never think of the fact that like, yeah, an editor is somebody who can go like chop out this and put this there and suddenly yeah. the, this comes together in this way. Yeah, yeah. Huh. It's and just and especially if you got I use uh Chas Pangburn and he's got his fingers in eight billion projects, I think. But okay. he, he does lettering as well, and that's he's helped me a lot with my my lettering since I started doing that, you know, I always send him stuff. Like, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And giving the little critiques and that, but it's even, you know, going through the art, you know, him looking at the script and looking at the art and giving his two cents in there, it's helped a lot. So that's 10 hours to Insmith. I gave him, you know, this is a 60 page script. Uh, I think by the time we were done, it was a 90 page graphic novel, just, you know, added a whole, you know act in there essentially and, right but the beginning story to where it is now the same vein but infinitely better so if you if you can and have access to definitely an editor okay. helps on that so even though i have not even going forward with cog and flame i've not <laughs> taken that to an editor i'm like i'll just keep fumbling with that one but everything <laughs> everything new i have been so I have met a few writers over the years that also did lettering and that's, it's mm -hmm. a thing. Are you doing digital letter lettering? First yes. of all? Okay. You yep. Are. Yeah. Right. It's, it's nice. Um, I think you should know it as a writer Yeah. and do it because just when you're writing panel descriptions and scenes, like what can actually fit into that panel, you know, the artist can do so much, but if you've got a wall of text or that you know what can fit what works and it's i think it's helped me a lot as a writer mm -hmm. doing that and lettering my own's nice if you know i can tweak my dialogue as i'm doing it this doesn't fit uh, well we can change this put it here put it there and break it up where you know a contracted letter might not want to do that or would have to contact you before doing it so yeah I can just on the fly change it up a little bit if i need to and so. that also being somewhat of the layout in because you're doing the the balloons as well yeah, the, yeah it's absolutely. not like you yeah. just have to fit into the the, the no. artist doesn't do the balloons just Correct. just to clarify if people don't know what we're talking yeah. about yeah. yeah yeah the letter does the balloons and usually the sound effects uh some mm. artists like to do that's i think a coin flip whether i would artists, agree i yeah. would agree so yeah some some of them really like to or do if they want it, something really incorporated in the artwork, yeah, they'll dig into that. But, right. It's, yeah. I have a pile of comics next to me and I wanted to open one just to show an example, show. but I'm not going to go <laughs> rifling through my comics right now. Um, and, and also, so with the lettering, uh, do you remember, and this is, this is how I learned a lot about what the process was. And it's funny listening to you going, these are the people I work with and you're talking yeah. editor and colorist and um, you know, a, a, artist anyway all that stuff and i learned it and tell me if you you said you were doing you had like how-to books and stuff like that yeah do you remember there was a publication or a, a magazine publisher back in probably mid 2000s 
uh, that was called Two Morrows, and they would put out a magazine called Right Now, and they had a magazine called Draw, and they had a magazine called, uh, they, they were specifically for different formats of, or different aspects of making comics. Oh, that's really neat. No, I've never oh, you didn't, heard of that. It was very no. short-lived. It was super, super helpful. Probably one of yeah. the things that taught me the most, like this was before you could find everything you needed to online. It was before yeah. YouTube. Um, all that kind of stuff. And I, and, and I think that's why it folded essentially because people yeah, just started can, doing that on YouTube. Yeah. You can find your YouTube videos. You can get anything you want online, you know, and that's definitely, okay. How do I make that type of balloon for right. lettering? Yeah. YouTube it real quick. Because, okay. That one's using this program, but I need it in illustrator. So find a different one that does that or kind of combine methods. Everybody's got their little bit different methods mm -hmm. of doing it. And during 2020, I took, the comics experience course for oh, lettering and that okay. was very helpful since i'd been i'd kind of self-taught myself seeing the the proper more direct ways to do some stuff on illustrator like okay. been doing very roundabout ways on a few of them like oh you can do that with a couple button clicks okay that's nice <laughs> yeah so you know to get to get that same project the the quicker ways and you know with something like that especially if you're contracted out to do it you know the more you can get out quicker obviously you know the right. more you're gonna page rates and that turn it over and get it out so which i've i've done a few for people so just small projects so you have so, done others uh others yeah. lettering yep. too okay yep. what, what kind of do you usually go with when you do it oh god um <laughs> i've i love the response depends, <laughs> depends on the script uh there's a couple it the last couple i've done have had more some robot -y type stuff in it so there's one it's a blam bot um, i use you do use blam, blam bot, bot stuff okay, yeah, yeah there's like a mech effects and a couple other ones that i really really like and i won't be able to pull the names out of my head here right there's a couple for sound no, that was mainly that I what i was curious love. about yeah. curious was if it was blam bot or not because that's yeah. that's the one i know like i can i can try and find something and then i'm like but mm -hmm. i go to blam bot and it's like damn it that's right on the money <laughs> yep that's perfect that's perfect so and you know most of them are the you know the small press ones that you're not you know, you don't have to buy the licenses for the one project I did. I, you know, did do the full licenses, you know, obviously if I'm doing something that's being published, I need to, right. you know, do that. But, um, but no, there's, there's enough there. That's yeah. It's great that they okay. have everything and they just put out a book, a new book, a new lettering book. So it's, oh, that just came out. Yeah. I didn't know they and were I releasing just, books. Okay. Yeah, they, they did it through, I think it, feel like this it came through image but uh nate picos did it oh. and yeah so there's that okay <laughs> so, that's pretty but it's, cool it's a neat it's it's neater than um most of the other lettering ones i don't it has i feel like more examples a little more less techy on, yeah on the writing so, you know some of them are either real techy or i don't know, cutesy almost you know they're right. doing it more i'm just like Tell me how to do it. Give me examples. I right. don't need it to look like a comic book going through it. So, but they're all they're all helpful. So I got they're that too the designed for their yeah. own good. It's like yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can read one yes. of the comics and see what you're talking about. I don't need to see it while I'm trying to learn it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just examples of it and that. But yeah, it goes through a lot of the different fonts um, that like using for different you know types of voices and that so. i do enjoy that and it took me i will say i, I wanted it it's hard to unlearn that because i want to go back in time and go did they always do that and now i can't tell and it's like did i not notice it before and now i feel like i notice it all the time and i know what that's supposed to mean it's you know it's been said a million times the lettering if it's good you don't notice it if it's bad you do notice it yeah and, you okay know, it's just kind of that Odyssey, you know, it should blend into the art. It's part of the art. You notice it like, ooh, that's weird, you know? And, yeah. But it it definitely pays to hire a professional letter or someone that knows what they're doing. That you've seen, I've, you know, had friends even that do it and like, oh, the artist says they can do it and they get some bad, like, yeah, it might have been worth your time to, you know, it's not awful but you know like th there's a reason why people make that 
specifically their job. It's, I get it's that. an art form on its own. So. Yeah. And so for now, we've talked all about this, and I just realized we haven't told people what the book is about. So this no, book you're working on. Not at all. On, not at all. <laughs> And yet I'm, I'm, I'm totally enamored in this conversation. Yeah. So I love it. But um, yeah. So Cog and Flame is your more sword sorcery fantasy type comic. It's about an old gnome, Cornelius Tinderbrook, who's trying to help stop magic from being ended by a technology cult, which is the Cog and Flame. They want to and magic and the social hierarchies that it makes. Uh, so you got magic and technology. Technology can be accessed by everybody. You know, anybody can turn on a light switch. Anybody can do that. Magic, either, you know, if you go like the d d rules, sorcerers, it's innate, it's born with it, or, you, you know, wizards, the learn type thing. So it's not, not everybody can be doing that. And it's kind of made a social hierarchy in the world. So Cog and Flame wants to and magic level all that out, get the same effects through science, through technology. And Cornelius in his past, when he was young, thought he had eradicated the cog and flame. You know, they they wronged him and he went on mission, wiped him out from the world, went to kind of his hermitage and it's finding out that, hey, all of these things I did ended nothing. You know, they're they're back, they're, right where we started and he's setting back out to to help stop them to root them out to find them so okay yeah and that's that's always been a theme that i've i like science versus magic that's kind of makes sense yeah so that's that's always always my thing i i like in D &D, like artificers that are kind of bridge that gap between the you know they make things but they also you know can cast some spells in there so, right and how yeah. how you said that you based it on uh when you were writing D D. now were there actual like did you create character profiles prior to this that you were yes. using from okay absolutely so the both of the the two we'll say main characters cornelius was one that i played and then the there's a a daemon which is kind of like a tiefling like race if you're a D, D player you know the horns and tail and all that good stuff yeah uh, he was actually my first character when i started playing so i'm just kind of taking those and morphing them and trying to work work some of that stuff in there so, okay yeah. over a period of time like you said back when you first started playing like how how far back are we going uh, when you first started so playing? i i did not start when i was young i always wanted to it was something i was always interested in mm -hmm. and none of my friends were or you know they were too cool for that stuff so you know i was i was the super nerdy kid uh i started playing but you had friends <laughs> friends yeah but they weren't into that stuff yeah um but i started playing right around when fifth edition came out so it hasn't been that long but five or so years so but when i started playing i deep dived into it you know that okay. was that encompassed most things at, at that time and i'm still i i run a game and play a game right now that's they were weekly games everybody's busy especially summer and end of summer here so you know yeah maybe we'll play once a month now but where do you do yeah. it at um we just do it over uh in discord oh so you do use, okay yeah google hangout stuff yeah all of we had a in-person thing but you know since covid that's kind of right. nixed a little bit more so we just haven't picked it back up now that you know we're all vaccinated but but it know, is with local it's, it's people easier. it's not yeah. it, it, it wasn't originally online yeah correct correct and but the game the both the games i had played were all over the country now so people have moved or you know joined online groups and that with just friends of friends so yeah so we're we play with people from all over the place. Okay. So, and yeah. to go back to what you were saying, the, uh, it, I was always interested in D and D, but it wasn't that my friends thought it was uncool or anything. They just didn't know what it was. And I always wanted to find out. So my reason that I never got into it was I didn't understand it. I didn't know where yeah. you began. I didn't know. I, I loved the books. I loved the artwork. I'd get them and there'd be all this stuff. And I'm like, but what do you do with this? I don't understand. Yeah, How do you, I don't, play? is there a board that I'm not, not finding somewhere? Am, am I missing this piece? Yeah. No, <laughs> and I, so I didn't get it. And then finally my son got into it when he was 
in grade school and he started mm-hmm. doing it with your friends. And I was just like, oh my God, you just make it up. I'm like, yeah, this is fantastic. Make or- organized role play. It's, yeah. I, I, we, you know, in any format, uh, we'll play some other other RPG games and it's it's nice. And especially people that have played together for a while, it's, you know, real easy to riff off of and do. And, you know, sometimes the games I run, I don't do anything. You know, they're just having conversations right. riffing and it just goes however it wants to. And that's, that's part of the fun of it. And, so. Well, and also then later on, I like, I wish this would have like uh Dan Harmon's community and his yeah. podcast would have helped yeah. me so much. If I would have heard oh, about that earlier, I would have been like, Oh, yeah. it's just thing. And also you, it's just chatting, uh, you know, yeah, all exactly. of that would have fixed it for me. And it, um, for me, it was, I grew up watching the dungeons and dragons cartoon, which didn't mm-hmm. help at all. It was just no, like, you're no. a knave and you're a knight and the and vengeance yeah. after you, you know, what? It's yeah. how's that a game? Uh, but that also, I realize now that that was kind of like, oh, it's an homage to the game, or it's like, here's a storyline that happened into it. And we just made it a fluid story. Is that yeah, kind exactly. of like what you're doing with the comic? Like, yeah. do you afterwards go, this is, I'm basing this on a game that we played, like um, a specific outcome? S- somewhat. And then I've also taken that idea of the cog and flame, this technology called A and work that into the game okay then the one i'm running you know that's how that one started that they they found this the group and you know so basically ran them through some of my ideas for for the comic and just say like okay that's that's a different outcome than i expected but i like that you know (laughs) so just kind of another form of editing helping yeah (laughs) having you know it's the same as sitting around and bouncing stories off of somebody you know so that's it's just a, it's a conversation, another way to work on it. So now some of my other ones, you know, that aren't based on that, that's just, you know, sit down, notes, 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 piece things together. And so the, my doom speaker comic, which is about a young boy who can touch someone, tell how they're going to die. And he's getting mixed up with like an old timey traveling carnival. So it's, they have limited powers in the carnival, but it's kind of that hiding in plain sight from people. People okay. think it's a show or want to think it's a, you know, that the wool's being pulled, pulled over the eyes, but they're really using real powers in it. Um, that, which I, I always loved carnival, the HBO show and right. anything set in that, that carnival type setting. And then I had just idea of that character that can, you know, tell how someone's going to die. And, but that was in a whole different story originally. And I'm like, okay, that needs to be here. And just kind of, these are really the same story, just different aspects of it and pushed them together. And that one, I don't, I've flowed quicker writing it than the other one. And it's maybe just because it was fresh, new, and I'm real excited about it and just go. And I felt like I took longer writing the Cog and Flame stuff than I did the Doom Speaker stuff. And same with the 10 Hours to Innsmouth, which is basically an E.T. story, but with um, like Cthulhu monsters, these two girls find uh, a deep, a baby deep one and are trying to return it to the sea. Okay. So I'm being chased by other like Lovecraftian type thing. So that's, that's the best way to put that. That's E.T. but with Lovecraft. So, and that one was just... I random, I, you know, just right. sitting there one day, I'm like, hmm, just started writing. And, you know, that one spewed out very quickly. So, but stuff I've been working on now, it seems like I've been picking at the same few stories for a year now. <laughs> so, okay. you know, I guess some things come quicker, some of them don't. So how many overlapping projects would you say you have total that are still in progress? Okay. I have like the one, I only have Doom Speaker and Cog and Flame where things are out. Okay. Uh, the the Lovecrafty one, there is art. There's probably about ten pages of art, and that's no time frame. You know, he's kind of working on that at his own pace. Um, we're doing a kids book pitch here pretty shortly. So many people so, surprise me with the kids book when they tell me these things. <laughs> it's a great fucking idea. Yes, yeah. it's, it's you know, it's not I at the tables like at the cons you know you have kids come up and like none of my stuff's bad you know some fantasy violence and right you know some mild swears but it's not directed for kids and i just kind of wanted to have something at the table like no this 
this is for you. But yeah, yeah it's about a group of kids that their parents work at like a government research base and they're, you know, live on the base and they're catching monsters that are coming through like rifts uh, caused by the research base, like outside of it. And they're catching them and turning them into stuffed animals. Okay. So and it's like a containment thing. Like instead of putting them in pokeballs, they're putting them in stuffed animals. <laughs> and so, and it's just fun and light and just, completely different and that might have been the most fun i've had i'm just like okay i read a lot of kids comics and uh our son's 11 so he was into some of like the scholastic ones and right. amulet was out and you know saw all the dog mans and captain underpants and all of those type of right so, like just reading those like okay i need to learn how to what do kids say how do kids talk you know oh, yeah. so yeah, on yeah. that level but no it's fun it's be a little more goofy with it so i feel like my other stuff's a little more serious so it's it's fun just to write dumb dumb dad jokes in there and right you know so i, I um, agree and sometimes it's yeah it's sometimes it's really hard not to do that when you're writing the serious stuff yeah yeah <laughs> and i i tend to to lean more on that but i do like some dumb jokes and some good stuff like i I think we watch more cartoons than our kids do. Oh, so agreed. my wife and I, so there's so much great cartoons out there and, you know, so yeah, we're, I was, I, I was at a place yesterday and I was list I was overhearing a conversation about from two people that were older than me talking about how they missed the cartoon chowder. <laughs> that was a good show. It was a great yeah. one, but these people we, were like my parents age and they're like, yeah. Oh, I wish they wouldn't have taken that off the air. I'm like, you're, we, you're older. <laughs> We've been working through um, we're all done Steven Universe, and somehow mm. I missed that when it was actually on. And that's an amazing cartoon, just even you know story wise and that, but the you know inclusivity of it, and, right? You yep. know, just it's it's great, you know. And so and that's what we've been okay. If we like that, let's check out this one and and that. And you know, there's always all the star wars cartoons and that but you know that type of stuff well and it goes to much like what we were saying before or you know both you and i had kind of said like oh if i would have known that when i was a kid that it was okay to do this then yeah you know like then people are making cartoons like that it's just i always get so taken back when it's like i'm writing these stories and they're about like monsters and killing and i'm doing a kid's book about it <laughs> yeah exactly it's, but there it's was like taking... gremlins there was you know gremlins God. was considered a kid's movie <laughs> movie the that was the first one's kind of scary i just the watched other, it the other one, night yeah, yeah i haven't watched it but that was for, yeah, when I watched that as a kid, and it used to be, we had a VHS tape that was recorded off of the TV of, it was the first Gremlins, and I used to watch the hell out of that, but right after it was Troll, and that terrified me, mm -hmm. and I would like, as soon as it ended, the other one would just start, and I would run. And not even Troll 2. No, not troll. even Troll 1, yeah, <laughs> just that opening scene, that little troll going through the garden, I'm like, gotta turn this off, gotta turn uh. this off. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get yeah. you with that one. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, now we could go on about cartoons and movies the entire yeah. time. But so, what are you? So you've got these uh, these projects, but you've got the Kickstarter. So what are your plans yeah. after the Kickstarter gets funded? Like what what's the what's the outcome? What do you have more that you're going to be doing? Like uh, yeah, uh, and publishing um, wise, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So the issue four is done, which okay. is different than the kickstarter for three three we were just starting it and you know it'll be six months until it's done it's i have to finish lettering it which you know i can i don't have that much more left to do so when the kickstarter ends the book will be done and essentially i'll be sending it to print and getting it out and i gave january for the thing just who knows how you know long sometimes things take and especially right. now to get stuff to me you know the actual copies but I kind of, there's a couple other people that I backed their Kickstarters for that were doing that. And it just seems smarter to me. And I like Agreed. getting my Kickstarter rewards quicker. And because I'll back Kickstarters and then, you know, a year from now, I'll get something like, what is this? You know, <laughs> a game or especially, especially games. If you back board games or, you know, RPG books, it's sometimes years before you see that because they want, 
the money before they even you know start the production process that's a valid point even though that is the concept you're right i get that now that you say it yeah yeah there's god there's and then yeah with delays there's been some that it's been a year and a half two years since it back that are just like starting to roll out shipment so yeah but yeah i'll forget all about them like what is this oh here we go that's a nice little surprise at least yeah yeah (laughs) comics they they seem to come out a little quicker you know less time and a lot of them are at least partially done or all the way done before they're they're really kickstarting but so we'll do this um the new artist for doom speaker started last week back up on issue two so hopefully that'll be rolling um that and as i mentioned that got picked up by scout so once we have a couple issues they'll put that in their publications and all of that and that'll be out in real stores which is super exciting yeah how how big is the distribution for that um they do full diamond and then they do direct sales too so so they handle the direct sales for you yeah they'll do like they're doing a lot of, they do a subscription box, yeah, which is really nice that just whatever their publications are that month, you get in the box, which is great. Okay. I've been doing that for a while now. So that'll be exciting too, is, you know, when I get that subscription box, hey, my own thing's in there. So how does, how does that work? Like, are you paid ahead of time? Like, is it wholesale or do you get paid by them using it? I guess I don't understand. I, the- so everybody's a little bit different with okay. the companies. Um, so it is creator owned. So I keep my rights and all okay, that good. To, to the things. But once, you know, they pay for printing and any advertising and distribution, and then I'll get a chunk off of the, off of the sales, then a certain percent off of that. So, oh, okay. So it's, I think it's quarterly. So they don't buy them up front. Buy. They, they, yeah. okay. Yeah. So yeah. And some, I don't think too many comics companies will pay you to do them. Um, you know, it's not like getting right. page rates from Marvel and that, or like, right. You don't have deals. an office there yeah. and they go, come on in yeah. and we'll pay you. Right. Well, yeah. That makes and, sense. I get that. You know, and book deals, you know, you give a pitch and you get it published and they're like, okay, we'll pay you this up front plus whatever. That's, that's a whole different thing. But yeah, the comics. That's what I was asking. Cause I didn't know if it was it like a record deal or is it like yeah. putting your stuff on Spotify where you got yeah. this many listens, but you get a share of this amount today. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's, gotcha. yeah it is. It is a share of the sales after, you know, they pay the which is, diamond fees and stuff. Which so. is still good. You yeah, know. which is still good rather than me printing, right. paying, you know, they're going to be printing cheaper than I can print okay. and because I'm doing smaller numbers and, you know, me hustling my own books. So, and yeah. do, do they also distribute it digitally? Do they put it on the platforms um, like Comixology or yes. anything like so that? So they're actually doing a neat thing and I don't know if they're doing it for all of their books. Okay. So they're, they just started doing these things called comic cards and it gives you a little collectible card it's like a credit card size and but it's got a download for the comic on it okay and i think that's real slick you know yeah. you get the digital but then you get something collectible and you know they just throw on like a rack that people pick up that like little gotcha little tags. so yeah. they can just and, like go okay boom and then they pay for it there and then it downloads yeah, yeah. oh i yeah. like that so i really like that i i re- it's it really really smart and they just started that. So they're doing it with some of their bigger runs now. And are they but hosting it themselves or is it through one of those platforms? I, I don't know. Okay. I haven't, I've got one sitting over there. I've never scanned it yet, so, <laughs> but, but, uh, very effective campaign, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, but I, I had already read the book, you know, it's okay. one that I had already, already had. Well, if you, you ever know, scan it, let me know, let me know who yeah. does it. I want to, I yeah, want to, because comicsology, or... yeah, comicsology is the only one that I'm familiar with. I'd like to know more about the other they're, publishing companies. They're, they're owned by Amazon now, aren't they? Yes. They yes. Are. Okay. Yeah. A, a couple of years now, actually. Yeah. And, so. uh, and it's because the only other platforms I know of, except for one that was mentioned from, um, uh, a person that I spoke with last season, which now the name of the company escapes me, but they actually did a print on demand thing mm-hmm. as well, sort of. But, uh, 
I'm thinking of digital and the only other uh, there's comicsology and then the rest of my know of are like web comics and web yeah, comics we, have no, that's basically like post them. And maybe if you get a lot of followers, it's like YouTube, then we'll start paying you something. Yeah, if you bring a lot of people web, here, like webtoon is that way. Yeah. Webtoons. You, tapas. you get, yeah. The most, the more you get through it. Yeah. Do that. But then webtoons does do the ones that you pitch to and they'll pay you for. Correct. As a, but you, you know, kind of have to be a known or a really hell of a pitch to get, right. you know, that I think. So, yeah. And, and mainly it's one of those things much like, unlike, actually, unlike the music streaming services, because a lot of people it's like, well, how am I otherwise going to do my comic on a site, first of all, and second, a site where you can keep scrolling through and reading. That's the difficult uh-huh. part. Like it's, yeah. even if you know how to build a website, it's like, but then how do you go through the comic? I mean, yeah, the the webtoon thing is, you know, it's it's made for the phone, so it's just that continuous scroll, and yep. that's a whole like you don't even there. realize that yeah. you've just read like five issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's different, and I I like some of the comicsology stuff. Like it's it's neat reading. I still prefer a physical comic. I do you too. Know, I do too. But I'll I'll read read the webtoon stuff and the you know I comicsology you know i have a few friends that have stuff i'll i'll look them out and i'll i'll read them but i would 100 percent prefer to have that you know you'll get pdfs for a million copies of different comics you know through kickstarters You're like here's here's all the other stuff i've worked on and i'll poke around at them but i'm right it's yeah. it's harder to sift through it. It's easier to look yeah. at something and shuffle through rather than scroll through a hundred page yeah. PDF and go like, yeah. well, let's give this a glance. And it's like, uh, I'm don't know what's going on. Um, yeah. I get that. Um, yeah. Anyway, so so yes, so you're publishing, and this is going to be coming. When it, when are you? When this? I'm going to say I'm going to predict when this gets funded, yeah. because you, I I, yeah. mean, I truly believe you're going to get funded. When when do you expect this issue to be coming out? Um, the dates I put on it was January. Okay. So I think that'll be, that's perfectly fine. Like I said, it's, it's done. I'll just see. Cause I did two, co- two variant covers, basically just waiting to see how many I need to order, you know, right. Of each, you know, and pump, send those out and go. And I, hopefully I can get them out to people by Christmas. If it's, you know, if turnaround time, I've always used comics wellspring for printing and they're at least, pre-COVID or during even the initial, I think uh, the last one I had printed was right in the thick of things and I got it in two weeks. So oh, okay, that was nice. So yeah. Um, so hopefully, yeah, get it done, get it out, get it out to people and go from there. I don't know how soon we'll be starting the next one of it, but hopefully, I mean, it's, it's written. Yeah. Uh, so whenever whenever Ethan next year is is ready to go, we'll go, you know. So I kind of always got that open to him, like whenever whenever you've got a gap in projects, let's let's go forward. So but he's he's knee deep in a couple other projects right now. So poor guy. We'll see. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's pretty strenuous. So but um but that's good. You know, if, if someone's doing full-time art, you want them to be busy. You don't want them to be waiting on you to, to continue on the project, you right. know, feel bad. Like, Oh God, I got to move this up. So you have a job. No, no, this, uh, you're, you're busy. The that's one fine. That's... that's good for, that's good for you. Yeah. So I never, never would begrudge that the, them being busy. So, yeah. so. Okay. Yeah. And if people wanted to see more of your stuff or keep up with you, where would you like them to Oh, Go yeah. check out. Um, so on Facebook, uh, my comics page is Neil Mockerman Comics, which is Mockerman is M O H E R M A N. Um, and Twitter is the Turkey Monkey. <laughs> um, so at some point, I should consolidate all my things to have one name throughout. Um, and if you do, I would go with the Turkey Monkey. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and then I do have. Um, what's the other one? Instagram. There we go. And that's just my name is Nate. Well, Neil Mockerman. You can find it on there. Um, but yeah, most there should be. If you find the Facebook, there's links to to all of it. The Twitter and the store envy site. And right now, all of the social media will have links to the Kickstarter 
going on it. So, yep. And yeah. then the next one coming up, if people are seeing this later on in the future, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that there'll be there'll be more, and I'll I'll probably keep doing Kickstarters on them, just trying again to keep growing growing fan base and growing no that. So, but I post a lot of stuff, so you can see other projects I'm working on or random weird life things or what I'm having for dinner and that not so much on the Facebook, the Twitter, <laughs> the Twitter is personal and comics. The, the Facebook is just comics. So, all right. So yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show today. 